In this nugget, we'll talk about Cisco OOB or Cisco Cube or Cube, Cisco Unified Border Element. It's known by many different names and people refer to it one of those three ways. Many of us have these cubes in our environment and what it allows us to do is to connect over an IP network to our ITSP. So instead of having to connect to the PSTN via physical connections like a PRI or FSO port, we can connect to our ITSP via an IP network and make inbound and outbound calls via our infrastructure. And this nugget will review Cube, the functionality and what features it can provide to us in our environment. Cisco Unified Border Element, also known as Cube. Now this is one of the many terms that you may hear presented in a different way. For example, you may see Cisco Cube. That's kind of redundant because it's Cisco, Cisco Unified Border Element. You may hear folks refer it to as Cisco OOB. But many times when folks say cube or Cisco cube, we know that we're talking about the unified border element. Now, what if I told you that Cisco cube was just like a voice gateway? And this is something that really confused me earlier in my career because I thought to myself, well, isn't it just like a voice gateway? And the answer is yes. With a voice gateway, it will connect one colleague to another colleague. So it connects these two colleagues together. Then when that call comes in, Inbound, we have another colleague going to our infrastructure. But with voice gateways, we are connecting, or we could be connecting a voice over IP colleague here and a POT colleague on the other side. So this could be a T1 or an E1 or FSO. Now Cube does the same thing. So we have an inbound and outbound colleague. And when the call comes back in, we have an inbound and an outbound colleague. But where it differs is that both of the colleagues could be VoIP colleagues. So mentally, when you think about Cube or when you see Cube, just think of it as another type of voice gateway or very similar to a voice gateway with the exception that we are connecting two colleagues that are VoIP on either side. In fact, Cube used to be called IP to IP gateway. And the reason being because both of these colleagues are IP. Now Cube has some additional functions that we'll talk about here shortly, but going back to the differences between Voice Gateway and Cube, the Voice Gateway connects you to the PSTN. So we're using a physical connection. Again, T1, FSO. The Cube is connecting you to a SIP service provider or an ITSP, which stands for Internet Telephone or Telephony Service Provider for that voice communication. And again, this is IP based. A queue can not only connect you to a ITSP, it can also connect you to a different voice over IP network. So this could be a sister company, ABC, that also has a queue that you can also connect to via IP. So you can now have communications between both networks. So when it comes to some of the features that Cube can provide, one of them is protocol interworking. I actually wrote internet, but it's interworking. So a Cube, it supports the interworking of different signaling protocols really SIP to SIP, but also H323 to SIP and also H323 to H323. So we're actually talking about inbound colleague to outbound colleague. So Cube can have the inbound colleague be SIP and the outbound colleague to also be SIP. It can also allow H323 for the inbound colleague and SIP for the outbound colleague. Or if we desired, we can do HD23 for inbound and outbound. A cube can also provide address hiding. So cube can hide the IP addresses of the endpoints inside your environment. So when a call is made from inside your environment through the cube, the cube will go ahead and replace the IP address from this endpoint, for example. So the ITSP knows that the destination is the IP address of that cube. So then both sides know in order to reach out to the ITSP, I need to contact the cube and the ITSP knows in order to reach this destination, I need to contact the cube. So neither side is aware of the other side. Cube can also provide security. So with cube, I can have a list of IP address or IP addresses that are only allowed to make calls to and from my environment. If you don't have this command configured where you only allow certain IP addresses to and from your cube environment, you open yourself up for telephony denial of service attacks. And this can definitely impact the functionality or the availability of your cube, or they can go ahead and modify the SIP 
messages that are coming back and forth to your environment. So we definitely want to have that trusted list in place. Q can also support H.263 video, the connection, so that helps with your video integration. And we also have the ability for CAC or call emission control mechanisms that can be used within Q. So as we can see here, Q gives us the flexibility when connecting to other networks, either the ITSP or another voice over IP network. And when we say flexible, it helps us deal with those other voice over IP systems if they have different compatibilities or if we're dealing with different signaling protocols like SIP and H323. So when we're talking about cube, we're really talking about a router that has the cube feature turned on. And we'll see that when we configure our cube in our environment. So just like a voice gateway, we'll still have dot peers. We'll still have the ability to define codecs. We still have the ability to define DTMF being used just like a voice gateway. So my diagram, my voice gateway is separate from my cube, but you could, if you really wanted to have the router be not only a voice gateway, but also have a cube. So we would have connectivity to those T1s, FXL port, and also have connectivity to an ITSP on the same device. Ordinarily, you would want to separate those, but that is quite possible. At the end of the day, this is just a router that runs iOS. And if you're doing cube, you've enabled that cube functionality. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.